Hey, y'all, what's going on? Welcome to Runners Rising. As always, I'm Eddie Benningfield, uh, the executive director, and I'm joined with our director of content uh, today, uh, Joe Rodriguez. Joe, what's going on? How's life? Everything's good, man. Awesome. Good deal. And we're uh, also super excited to uh, have with us today one of our official athletes, uh, Michaela Alpew. Uh, she's um, a sophomore, plays uh, volleyball, originally from uh, Spring, Texas, uh, come from uh, uh, Klein Collins High School. Um, so some, some talking a little bit about, uh, Michaela here before we actually start getting into the nitty gritty about what she's doing. So this, so, so far some pretty, uh, so her season highs has uh, had four kills against, uh, Louisiana tech, uh, 44 assists against uh, Florida Atlantic and uh, UTSA's win, uh, over, uh, the, um, over FAU, uh, in that, uh, match. So doing some uh, uh, some really good things as a contributor uh, here as a uh, as a sophomore. So uh, Michaela, welcome. How's it going? Good, thank you. Awesome. And we were just talking about uh, the Coraline and the t and the uh, Tim Burton posters behind you. So uh, a lot of respect there. So I, I like I I really feel on that. Um, so Tim. So obviously the Tim Burton thing is that is is he your favorite director? Yeah. For sure. Uh, he's got a lot of good movies. Um, uh, Corpse Bride, Coraline, Nightmare Before Christmas, all of them. Just like the Claymation is my favorite. Yeah. Corpse Bride, man, I think it's been a hot minute since I've seen that one. That's the one where, like, she falls off the, no, shoot, it's not Corpse Bride. I'm thinking he did, like, another one. It was, like, the, um, his, I think, think it was live action where it was the chick was the, like, Alpar or the nanny. I think I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, I think that one. And then have you seen Edward Scissors? Uh, Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, classic. Fair. Cool. Well, so I guess kind of going into it, how did you get to uh, UTSA? Uh, I started my recruiting process when I was about 16, um, just sending out emails to schools. Uh, and Dom, one of the our assistant coach, she reached back out to me and she invited me to the camp. And as soon as I got on campus, just everything about it, I just fell in love. And then I just decided at camp that I was going to commit here. So nice, that's awesome. So uh, you were uh, you did club in high school? Uh, yes, I started uh, playing volleyball and club volleyball in seventh grade. Okay, where'd you play? I started at um, Woodlands Revolution, and then I went to Houston Skyline. From there. Yeah. And then uh, Houston Skyline, you had a all-time record, right? What, it was about uh, 3,000 assists? Yes. And our, my, I think my 16th season, so my first season there. That's freaking, that's, that's wild. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> does that, does that record still exist? Does that? Uh... It does. It does. Yeah, it still stands. Nice. That's, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So I guess going on in the season, y'all have, uh, de you all have definitely blood, sweat, tears, and I think bone too. <laughs> uh, from from uh, from uh, one of the incidents early on in the year, uh, how's how's this how's everything going? How's the new coaching staff? Good, yeah. Uh, the new coaching staff is great. Actually, our assistant Dom is the one who recruited me, and then she okay. left and came back recently under uh, Coach uh, Coach Carroll. And um, this is Coach Carroll's first season, but and so we're all still kind of like learning um, yeah. her mechanisms and like her coaching style, but it's been good. It's been great. I, I love our coaches. Good deal. Good deal. So obviously, um, you know, this, uh, this season is the last one in conference USA and you mm -hmm. got, you're all giving it your all. And then uh, we're, we should be transfer, uh, transitioning as an, as an institution to the American athletic conference uh, during your time here. So uh, what's that hype been like? And do you, how do you feel about that new, uh, that new level of competition that's coming? Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, there's a lot of good schools in that conference and uh, like Rice and uh, some of the Florida schools are moving with us too. I think FAU and um, it's just really exciting. It's good competition and we'll get our floor, the combo floor redone because it says CUSA. So then it'll get redone to AC, AAC. <laughs> nice. That'll actually be pretty cool to see. Yeah. And then it's actually like real, like paint, the paint's dry and it's like, yep, this is official. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. So um, what, uh, what part of your game do you take the most pride in? Uh, I think that what I take the most pride in would definitely be um, necessarily my position uh, and like running an offense. It's like kind of like the quarterback of the volleyball team. So mm -hmm. 
in my head, like I have to plan out the offense and which routes my hitters are going to run. And I take a lot of pride in um, setting that up so that our team can be as successful as it can be. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's uh, been your favorite moment so far um, with your time at UTSA? Um, definitely one of my most fun times would have to be uh, at the FAU game this season. It was uh, really tight, neck and neck. Um, and then in the fifth set, I got to run a 5-1, so I was setting all the way around, and we ended up winning the game 15-5. Uh, to five. So it was really exhilarating and a lot of fun, that game. That's, that's pretty awesome. It's basically down to the wire, and uh, y'all take Yeah. Care. That's really cool. Um, so what's your relationship uh, like with the, the rest of your team? Are you guys pretty – like how, how close are you guys? Oh, yeah, we're definitely close. Um, I mean – my teammates are my friends or who I hang out with outside of volleyball. Um, I'm roommates with three of them and we're all just together all the time and we love hanging out together. It's really good tight knit group. That's awesome. So yeah. uh, I guess that, so if y'all are rooming together, who is uh, most likely to uh, clear out the fridge and eat everybody's food? Definitely Brooke, Brooke Hirsch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She's always downstairs finding something in the fridge. <laughs> nice. So you gotta like basically like, it's like, it's like, yo, this is mine. Do not touch this. Like put notes on it and stuff. You still come back and like, it's all like been like gone through and eaten. Yeah. There's been, cause like sometimes we'll get lunches from uh, our, like our coaches will buy us lunches and I've had to uh -huh. start writing my initials on my actual food so that she won't eat it. <laughs> That's awesome. So on your nutrition, do you all have like a, a calorie count that you guys are trying to hit during the, during the day? Like what is, what is that like? Um, we don't necessarily have, like, last year we had a nutritionist, um, mm -hmm. and she moved, and it just, we just didn't stick with it. Uh, we don't have, like, a necessary um, calorie count that we try to make. Uh, whenever we, it's just kind of like a personal thing. If you feel like yeah. you need before practice, like, because we have lift right before practice, mm -hmm. so we're able to grab, like, a protein shake or a sandwich or something before heading to practice, and then they always make sure, even on, like, away trips, they make sure that we're well-fed and just feeling good. Gotcha. Hold on. My my uh, wife just let the uh, the little dog in. Come here. No, <laughs> she's not coming. All right. Oh, awesome. Our, we call her Nugget, and she just left us uh, Nuggets on the floor, Aww. which is fantastic. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. Do you have any dogs? I have a cat, actually. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. This is, this is Maggie. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> she's, a, she's a monster, but she's a monster, and that's what matters. Um, so, so uh, cat with you all there or back in, uh, back at home? Uh, here. I have actually not including the one, because I, I brought this one from home, and so we have five other cats and a dog at home. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. Cat in the room right now. Can we see the, can we see the cat? I actually, I gave him to Brooke to hold, because I wasn't sure if he would jump in front of the camera. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, so talking on uh, talking on cats. So I've got one. She's a, she's nine. She'll be ten here at the beginning of January. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, she, she's a pain in the side. Like like all good animals are right. Um, yeah. We ended up she uh, had to get like uh, emergency surgery this uh, over the summer because she ended up eating some string. But like she's mm -hmm. super so super like uh, te temperamental, and like mm -hmm. literally will go from. 30 seconds like loving on you to like literally like hyperdermic needle to your uh, hand up and that's what happened to me last i've got like, a bunch of band-aids and stuff on oh, so no. her in the middle of the night like she's like, like you know doing the head butts for love loving her and then all of a sudden turned and it was like on a dime <laughs> so it's she it's, it's one of those like you know like reminding us who's in charge yeah for sure yeah that's how my cat is too sometimes like i'll be loving on him and then all of a sudden it's just kind of like a like a love bite type of thing it's like yeah. okay too much sorry it's like dude it's like what the, what the heck like we, yeah we, we were on we had terms here yeah that's yeah, funny um so just real quick also notice so notice the artwork so uh where'd you get that what's this, any any significance there um this one was my first one i'm actually i'm half samoan uh my okay. dad is samoan so yeah uh, they're all tribal he actually drew these flowers that i have oh, that's awesome um and then this one i I was going to Hawaii with my mom um, and I wanted to get a tattoo and I went to the lady and I told her I was Samoan. So she put in a Samoan tribal print in this flower. 
I mean, awesome. in this start. So, and she freehanded it, but yeah. So uh, I guess what, what island are y'all from? You guys? Uh, my dad was born on Oahu. All of his okay. siblings were born in Samoa, but his dad was in the Navy and he was stationed okay. on Oahu. So that my dad was born on Oahu. Gotcha. Were you, uh, were you born in Texas or were you? Uh... I was born in California, but I moved here when I was like two years old. So I don't really remember it much. Gotcha. What part of Cali? Uh, we lived in El Segundo, but I was born in Beverly Hills. Okay. Gotcha. And then your dad, uh, he, um, he played for the uh, LA Rams for a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In a strike relief game. That's crazy. That's, yeah. that's actually, that's actually a pretty cool piece of history that, uh, that's like, I don't know. That, I think that's, that's really cool that your dad kind of had that uh, piece there. And then I uh, was also in the uh, LA express as well, right? For the USFL. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he that's played cool. uh, for BYU. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. So before, I guess, before you became a roadrunner, were you a BYU fan at all? Um, a little bit. I didn't really keep up with it too much. Um, but yeah, so just roadrunner fan since the get go kind of. Gotcha. All right. So kind of moving on. So who was, um, I guess if you had to pick one person, who is that one person that you like look up to the most and is it, who has taught you the most about life? Um, definitely my mom. Uh, growing up, my dad actually passed away when I was seven from lung cancer. So it's just oh, kind of wow. been me and my mom um, growing up. And she's just been like, she took a really good job of, or she did a really good job of stepping into being both parents, basically. Yeah. And she was very open with me and I could come to her for anything. And it just, I think it built a relationship early on that is is and was different than like most people in many cases so it's yeah. really special to me that's 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 awesome and i think that's uh, a testament to your mom you know i think both of yeah. y'all like the resiliency that you guys had to um you know one i'm sorry and i'm, I'm sure i mean it's it's been forever and yeah. but I mean, it's Thank still you. like you know losing a parent i can only i can only imagine Mm -hmm. um but it definitely tells up the testament of your mom's strength there to definitely get you through Thank that you. so kudos to your mom for for being that rock for you yeah she's awesome <laughs> yeah for sure um so what's uh so i guess on that what's the greatest lesson you've learned so far in your life um i think one of the greatest lessons would uh it's kind of basic but like definitely trusting the process um when i was started volleyball uh i was a hitter and mm -hmm. When my coach changed me over to a setter, I was like, I don't want to be a setter. Like I learned the glory position, like being all cool, being a hitter. Yeah. Um, but just kind of like now where I am, I love my position. I love my job. And like, but like looking back, I didn't then. And it's just the same thing for many cases in my life. Like when I was seven years old and it was just me and my mom, I'm thinking like, how are we going to make it through this? But like looking at it now, it's just like, that was such a small part that just makes you who you are in the long run. Yeah, definitely. So what class uh, so far is, uh, have you learned the most in? Um, definitely, I'm taking a zoology lab this semester. Okay. And I think it'd definitely be that class. All right, so, so lay it on us. Like what, so what, what are you learning in there? Uh, we're learning different, um, so there's like categories that animals are divided into all the way up into their species. Um, and so we've learned like different phylums. And so for each organism, we have to learn their phylum class, uh, genius and species. And then we okay. have, like, our midterm was basically like you had like a list numbered one through 20 and you just had to oh look God. at an organism and like know the name of like what you were looking at, the function of like maybe the organ that you would because it's a lot of dissections yeah so it's of course. just like like it'll be like labeled number one and it's like what is this organ and what is the function and you just had to like know off the top of your head so it's definitely a lot of studying in that class yeah <laughs> it's taking a lot hold, of time. hold on real quick i'm gonna close my door okay So are you are you definitely enjoying it though? Oh yeah, definitely. It's my it's my favorite class that I have taken so far and that I am taking. But uh, yeah. it is a lot of work, but it is a lot of fun. God, I, I could even imagine like 
kind of that rope memorization. And it's like, I, like identify this fungus. It's like, I know. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely like, like our teacher early on was like Quizlet and like making flashcards on Quizlet is going to be your best friend type of thing. Like he let us know early. <laughs> yeah. So I guess here's a kind of a random one. You guys in that class, do you all like talk about Sean the Dark here, right? Like, like what life would look like on like another planet or whatever, or if like we were to encounter it. I don't know if that's kind of in the in the realm of that. Um, we haven't ever really talked about that, but I'm sure my professor is very smart, so I'm sure yeah. if I ever brought it up to him, he would definitely have an opinion on that. So definitely, but it's kind not like, something that's come up. Yeah, definitely, like kind of like how like in the Mariana Trench or whatever, like or like in Antarctica, that you find like this, yeah. this extreme life that doesn't uh, metabolize kind of like the same mm -hmm. way that we would or like the regular plant, like animals or plants would. Yeah, definitely a lot of interesting stuff out of the, out there. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. So what does, uh, so I guess, what do you want to do after, uh, after you're done with your time at UTSA? Um, for a long time, it's always been my dream, uh, to go, well, to go to University of Hawaii and get my master's in oceanography or marine biology. Um, but recently actually one of my teammates, Ava Camacho, her parents worked for the EPA Okay. And they were telling me about um, like good internships that you can, because actually Ava's oh, yeah. an environmental science major too, but she, they were talking about um, that you can get good internships uh, through the EPA and that then would turn into good job opportunities and that there's, um, I think, 10 different like um, setups that they have around the country. So like you okay. have like an option of where you would want to work. And then even if I still wanted to do something with the ocean that I could like work with uh, flying out to like somewhere where tsunamis happen or something yeah. like some sort of like ocean distress or some sort of studies, but not have to necessarily live on the coast. Okay. Yeah. So tsunamis, I guess. That was extreme. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely uh, it's definitely out there. That's um, I guess. Would you live on the coast, or is that is that a, is that a concern? <laughs> Well, the tsunami <laughs> thing, that just kind of popped in my head as I was yeah. talking, but more like uh, just like coastal problems, issues, stuff like that, that would need to be studied. But I did like, because I've always wanted to live on the coast. And so like being an oceanographer or something um, wasn't really an issue because I've always wanted to live on the coast. So that's something, it's either like when I start like getting to be like a senior, then I'll kind of choose the pathway of which I want to which yeah. way I want to go with it after school. Joe, I saw, I saw you shaking your head there. We were talking about uh, living on the coast. Is that, a, is that a no from you? Yeah, for sure. Um, but no, early on when, when, uh, when she mentioned um, um, uh, marine biology, the first thing that pops in my head is a Seinfeld. Or, is anybody here a, mar a marine biologist? Uh, but anyway, if you've never seen that, then it wouldn't be that yeah, funny. But yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. I think, yeah, I think I'm, a little, I'm a little young for that. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, um, yeah. The, the, the water's rising is uh, a little, a little scary. Yeah, for sure it is. Oh my gosh! Like, so I, I I've got some friends like like with the hurricane that just hit um, Florida, uh, Florida and stuff. Like, I, I've got some friends who they live not in Tampa but kind of like closer to Orlando and stuff. And they're like, they had some like kind of wild stories of some of the stuff that was going through there. And I can like only imagine. Yeah. And then, shoot i mean i mean if your family is still like living on oahu and stuff or like in the islands like the amount of like you know geologic activity that happens in the pacific and then all of a sudden the siren goes off and you got to go find like high high ground and whatever yeah yeah definitely like i've always wanted to go like to get my master's in hawaii but i don't think i could ever live in hawaii just because you're basically on an island well you are on an island and there's nowhere for you to go if something's going south so yeah and then, I mean, I think it would, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like I've, I've got some, I've actually have a couple of friends who they're either stationed out there or they ended up, they, they live out there mm -hmm. and it sound it sounds cool. But at some point, like, like, it's like, you got to explore. You can only see yeah. so much. Granted, like, what is it? Is it the, like, I know the big Island has like, it has basically, you, you can, you can be in snow and then you can be in like jungle in a matter of like 10,000 feet or whatever the, the, the height of the, uh, the mountain is, which is, which is, which is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, you gotta, you gotta be able to move around. 
Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, cause like when I was younger, I think I was talking to my mom and I was like, it would be so cool to live in Hawaii, but it's like, you can't take road trips anywhere. Like you, there's only so far that you can go before you're going to end up back where you were in the beginning. Un unlimited spam and eggs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty awesome. Get the, uh, do the EPA thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess an extreme, would you ever like live in Alaska? Cause like, I know they, I know they're still doing like Exxon Valdez, like, like to this day cleanup kind of like in and around, uh, like that area. Yeah. I don't know if I could live in Alaska. I don't know like too much about Alaska, but I'm pretty sure isn't it like it's dark most times like. No. So check it out. So it's, so right now it's probably dark and there's probably, oh my God. So I lived there when I was a kid, little kid. Okay. I, I have like super vivid memories of it. And I remember Halloween, 1994. Um, I remember like I was in my costume and like my, my, my friends, like my mom and stuff. And I remember there being like, there was like these massive snow banks, but it was uh -huh. like three feet, four feet, but just still a lot of effing snow that's kind of like sitting there. Yeah. Um, but like I had an opportunity and I'm not, I'm not going up right now. I think actually, no, they... I think because of the weather, they were, we were supposed to go up and go do something in uh, Alaska. Now everything's moving to Hawaii, but I'll be missing that trip, which is now I'll get on the next one. Need to hear her there. But during the during winter months, it's actually pretty bad. But uh, the summer months, they have the uh, midnight run, which is a marathon that I think uh, starts in, in uh, Anchorage. And it's like, it's, it, get, it can get up in the 80s and the 90s every once in a while, uh, at least kind of on the coast and kind of around like Anchorage and stuff. And it's, it's, from what I remember, I remember it being very pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like talking to my parents and stuff, like you gotta watch out for the wildlife, like you gotta yeah. carry like bear mace or like a a gun on you, not for people, but for bears. Yeah. Uh, and then like the moose, you gotta kind of like watch for the moose, but it's it's incredibly beautiful. Yeah, I've only ever seen pictures, but it's definitely beautiful for sure. Yeah, but um but yeah, well, good luck on whatever you choose to uh, uh, do on that front. But uh, so I guess you said that, you know, kind of as, as that centerpiece, you're, you're the, uh, you're, for lack of a better term, the quarterback of the, uh, uh, of uh, the team on, on the court. What does leadership mean to you? And, you know, playing in that leadership role, what has that taught you? Um, leadership to me definitely is, I think a big piece of setting an example, not necessarily just setting an example, but, um, to a certain extent you have to hold yourself account accountable so that you can hold others accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, just pushing each other to, or like pushing people to go in the right direction, um, giving guidance. I think especially like I've learned a lot, uh, being a sophomore this year, even though I'm only one uh, one year older than the freshmen, uh, it's definitely been like a lot of fun and a joy for me to be able to help the freshmen see like things around and like show them the do's and don'ts of what we should do, like at practice or just um, trying to push not just the people younger than me, but like also the people older than me to do the right thing in just whatever yeah. situation we're in. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's that that actually means a lot, especially if you can sit there and be kind of that like, hey, I was just there. This is what you want to do. Hey, yeah, if you want if you don't want to learn by school of hard knocks, you're going you're to do this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's just it's a lot of fun because like knowing like just being there, too. Um, there were a lot of even seniors that graduated that were really helpful in guiding me in the right direction. And I think that's a big piece that needs to be passed on from like class to class. And so just teaching the people under you that lesson helps them teach the people that come after them too. Yeah. So obviously this is a, uh, you're doing this as part of an NIL deal. I mean, pretty honestly, again, thank you for partnering with us and then taking the time out of your schedule to do this for yeah. us. But what, uh, what are your thoughts on NIL and how has it impacted you and your teammates? Uh, I think it's awesome. Um, I, this is my first uh, NIL partnership, um, but I think it's a great uh, a great thing for college athletes. It's awesome that 
we have the opportunity to do something like this. Um, and it's a lot of fun too. Not only are you like, it's a partnership both ways, but it's a new thing and it's a lot of fun to do. And a couple of the girls on the team actually have NIL partnerships. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to watch them grow and what they're accomplishing and their NIL deals too, so. Yeah, I think we have one with, uh, we have one with Amanda. So that's awesome. We're super happy to work, work with her in the past. So kind of kind of awesome to start repping, uh, repping the volleyball team, get y'all taken care of. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And Kelsey as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, good thing. All right. So kind of we've got to come through all the important questions and stuff. So I got a couple more kind of kind of silly ones and stuff. So um you've seen actually we'll we'll go around, we'll go disregard that. But uh all right, where are you going for uh for tacos in town? Oh, definitely. I've heard a lot of good places um being in San Antonio, mm -hmm. but I'm just I hold it down with torchies. That's my all-time favorite. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, a controversial <laughs> take because that's an Austin uh, eatery there. Um, man. All right. Tor you were the first person that, I, and ironically, we, um, so most people, yeah, I know, new, no, no kidding there. But uh, most of our, uh, everyone we talked to, and we were kind of joking that uh, in, Jared Kalmus uh, on his uh, podcast, Alma Dome Audible, like we were, he, he's joked before that we all think that the shadow NIL dealer in town is uh, is uh, Taco Palenque. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that's like, everyone's like, yeah, Taco Palenque, like, it's like, it is like 80 to 90% of people have come up and have said that. Yeah, I'm, and um, yeah, so I used to, like, my big thing has always been like, like, there's the place by my mom's house. Mm -hmm. that's off of Claybrook at 1604 that's that place it's it's a hole in the wall it's great it's awesome but if I'm looking for like a quick fix I'm gonna roll to Las Palapas and that's mm -hmm. that was kind of like my thing like so going down 16 I used to live um Calabra, 1604 Westover Hills kind of like that whole area 151 okay. and it was an easy like when traffic wasn't murder yeah um, <laughs> it, was, it was late so usually traffic would be dead by this point. That the the Las Palapas off of uh, Bandera six hundred four was usually where I would stop and I'd get food and keep driving home. Um, but to like, but like TC's was always like uh, like a whatever. But like I I flew back up for the um, for the home opener against Houston for the football game, and my brother and I went to Taco Palenque for the first time. I was like, all right, this is legit. This is awesome. Yeah. It's definitely good, and I've had it a couple times. Uh, cause I'm so I'm from Houston, and they don't have, or I've never seen one in Houston before. Yeah. Um, but even just Houston and here, like Torchies is my favorite, and I think possibly what has me sold is their queso, but I do like their tacos a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me ask you this then: Freebirds or uh, Chipotle? I'm not a big fan of either. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, we've had, I, I do like Chipotle. I will eat Chipotle, but, um, I think I've only had free birds, uh, once or twice on campus and, but I would never like pick to go eat at either one. Wait, there's I guess. a free birds on campus now? Yeah. What? Yeah. It's, it's wow. new. It's, I think they built it last semester or something, okay. like they at one of the old restaurants, but there's one on campus now. Nuts. Damn. School's yeah. literally, it's going places. Oh my God, there's a free birds there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Chipotle, I used to be super anti-Chipotle, but it's a good state yeah. of life if you need to get something. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, the uh, the Torchies piece. So we we worked with a guy uh, for a little bit. His name is Tyler Jordan. He's He was one of our, uh, he, he did our public affairs for a little bit. Now he's doing his, uh, he, he, he split off and he's doing uh, some consultant work for NIL. Mm -hmm. But um, great dude. But we were talking to him and he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I've had, I've had me te Mexican food. I love Torchies. And we were all like, dude, <laughs> okay. Like just okay. Giving, it, giving it hell because it's, it's, it's awesome food. Yeah, but it um, is good. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like Mexican food. No, no. Yeah, but definitely. but that's that's awesome. That um, any, anyway, I, I I've never had them, so I'm like totally throwing shade at them without actually trying, and I'm sure they're fantastic. <laughs> I gotta I gotta represent uh, I gotta represent my home city. Yeah. Um, what kind of music do you listen to? 
Um, I kind of just listened to like whatever my friends were listening to. Uh, growing up, lots of reggae, island music. Really? Um, yeah. Okay. But um, like Jay Boog, Bob Marley, stuff like that, just kind um, you know, I of. I fell in love with uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers like in 2015. Uh, I was in Korea and in Seoul, they had a um, they had a coffee shop that was totally dedicated to Bob Marley and they played all his music. That's awesome. It was legit. I think his, what's his son's name? Uh, I can't think of his, like, I'm blanking on what his son's name is, but I think, like, he owned, like, it was a franchise, and it's like, some, Ziggy. Like, his son, Ziggy, yeah. 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 Ziggy owned it, and it was, um, it was kind of cool. So if you ever, if you ever find, I'm, I'm sure it's gone now, because stuff in Korea changes, like, every three years. It's all, they're always rebuilding stuff, but mm-hmm. it's a, it's an Itaewon, which is the international district, and, like, overlooked, like, kind of, like, the borough, and it was, like, you just kind of sit. Was, that's cool I, frankly after a night of like hard drinking and stuff and like you're just like just trying to relax and trying to nurse the hangover and yeah just <laughs> listen, uh, vibing to a uh, woman no cry and, and, yeah. and everything else and it was it was legit that's super cool yeah um what is your since we're in ha- halloween uh time what is your favorite scary movie um hmm I don't know if I have a favorite. I've like recently kind of gotten into the more like watching scary movies without being terrified. Um, okay. I Bless did you, go- because I'm not even there. <laughs> like that's that's. I can't watch them alone. I I don't watch them alone. But I did go see um, that new movie Smile that came out. Okay, how was that? And it was really it, okay. So it wasn't really scary, but it was definitely like psychologically trippy like definitely had like a psychological thriller type of thing um just because like it wasn't like they put in kind of jokes in every so once in like once in a while so it was kind of like to break up like the scariness I guess but um I thought it was really well done in the end it didn't end the way I wanted it to but I thought it was good (laughs) gotcha gotcha so if there was like a movie that or something that like or haunted house, like what scenario would you be like, oh, absolutely not. Like I'm gonna have I'm not gonna see this. Like what is it? Is it like aliens? Is it oh. like the mud man? Like what what do we got? Definitely I can do clowns. Um, okay. but I definitely think aliens. I think there was like an old movie named Aliens or something, and then I went to Universal and then like I went in the ride and like the alien came down from the ceiling and it completely freaked me out and I don't do aliens and I would not do aliens. <laughs> yeah. Was that Universal or was that Disney? Because I remember I, I, it, I remember going on a ride too and I think like Hollywood, like Planet Hollywood or whatever that's sitting. Yeah. Or it might have been in Disney and Hollywood Studios. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I've, so check it out. So yeah. Alien. I saw Alien like in 2001 I was like 11 and watched it and I was like all right this is this is kind of cool and mm-hmm. then never watched it again and then I want to say like 2012 2013 started having like terrible effing nightmares about like <laughs> alien and stuff and the chest bursters and I've been I've been terrified about of, of it since like <laughs> like literally like sat through and with like like saw alien saw like alien versus predator but alien's great like I don't care what anybody says that's it's it just took your brain off and watch that stuff because it's a great, you know, th- action thriller, or whatever. But yeah. yeah, like, no, that, that, that stuff scares the absolute crap out of me. And yes. that, so- <laughs> um, like abduction stories and stuff. Like I got stuck on a YouTube, on a TikTok like hole, like one night, just like looking up like abduction crap. Oh, no. and it was, yeah. And it's like, it's like, Oh, I, I <laughs> like wake my wife i'm like hey can, can you can you cuddle me for a minute i'm a little, she's like Shut up. no and then kind of rolls back over <laughs> oh that's so funny joe would you would you mess with aliens no i don't i don't do i don't do scary movies like i've never seen aliens so yeah i'm i'm out yeah if you want to like an actual like really like like my wife refuses to watch this movie just because it's it's pretty it's pretty messed up is uh the fourth kind Oh, I haven't heard that. Yeah, so Joe knows. Uh, No, I don't, but I'm out. (laughs) Oh, I thought you did. Okay, so uh, the the fourth kind is based, the premise is like these people start getting abducted in Nome, Alaska. It's totally not Nome, Alaska, but that's, it's 
look past that and yeah. <laughs> people start getting abdu- getting abducted and, like this this uh uh lady like records like her sessions and stuff and like through hypnosis like people start like speaking like sumerian and all these dead languages and it's because they've been abducted and they're reproducing like and it's like that's so weird yeah it is it is terrifying i don't know i think it's terrifying but that's because i'm scared of that stuff it's it's probably stupid as hell but (laughs) definitely it's probably gonna be terrifying yeah but um anyway well i think that's that's time um michaela Thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. Like I know between school and, uh, and doing, um, you know, you know, athletics, it's definitely two full-time jobs. So we definitely appreciate and understand the time that you are giving to us and we appreciate it. But if people are looking for you on social, where, uh, where can we find you? Uh, Instagram, uh, Michaela underscore up uh, Twitter, I think is up dot Michaela. And, um, yeah, that's where you can find me. And thank you guys so much for, um, having me. This partnership has been awesome. It's so like easy and so fun. And thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Yeah, no worries. We, we appreciate it again, but, uh, for everybody else who's uh, kind of sitting out here and listening and, uh, and watching this stuff, uh, remember that we are, um, a 100% crowdfunded, uh, collective and, uh, the money that we do get, it allows us to, uh, support and develop, uh, these young student athletes, uh, like Michaela and many of, uh, her, uh, her peers that have uh, worked with us and also fun news. We are now a 501c3, uh, public charity. So, uh, your, uh, donations are tax refundable, uh, to, I think 60 or 50%. It's wherever it's on the IRS side. I gotta look that up and probably post that in a blog at some point, but, uh, yeah, there, uh, there is that. So, um, again, um, and it, it all helps and it allows us to expand what our, what our mission and our capability is, uh, to uh, develop and empower the next generation of leaders in San Antonio and beyond. But, uh, I am, uh, Eddie Benningfield. You can find me at, uh, Eddie B, uh, one, two, five, six on, inst- on, uh, uh, Twitter, we are at uh, runnersrisingproject.org, and you can search us at uh, runners underscore rising at most, if not all, social. So that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, the TikToks. Um, Joe's there. So Joe's, uh, Joe's, Joe, you're, you're the best. We appreciate you. But uh, that's it for us. You all have a good night, and uh, birds up. Thank you again, Michaela. Thank you.